Here's my ranking of the Halloween franchise. Groovy. Coming in at number 13, dead last for me, as no surprise, as I'm sure it is for a lot of people, is 2002's Halloween Resurrection. I mean, there's not much to say about this movie. They dropped the fucking ball. Hard. The whole... The whole angle with like the found footage thing and they try to kind of hop on the trend that was, you know, kind of happening in the mid to late 90s, early 2000s and the whole Busta Rhymes like whooping Mikey's ass with karate and shit. I don't know. This whole movie was just a misfire for me. It was, there was no love put into this thing. It was a cheap cash grab and it totally ruined the timeline setup with a Halloween H2O. Totally just fucked up that entire timeline. It is a dumpster fire. And to be honest, it's the only film in the franchise that I wholeheartedly dislike. Every other film after this, regardless of the ranking on the list, I actually enjoy. Not to mention bringing, bringing Jamie Lee Curtis back as Laurie Strode for the beginning to kill her off in the mental institution. Just the way that fucking played out. Totally a bummer. Horrible idea. Why Jamie Lee came back for that, I'm not sure. Maybe, I guess, just to get a quick check. I don't know. A final farewell to the franchise. She Maybe she thought. I, I'm not sure. But it was poor. It was bad. Coming in at number 12 for me is this year's Halloween Ends. The ending of the David Gordon Green trilogy. As I said, the only film I dislike on this list is Resurrection. Halloween Ends. I enjoyed it. I think it's a really good movie. As a standalone, I guess you could say. But as the end cap of the new trilogy, it definitely let me down. Not be, not, not because of the story they chose, but because this Corey character, who I actually really like, if he was just a main character that was introduced in Halloween 2018 and survived all the way through to Halloween Kills, and then this story unfolded in Halloween Ends... Dude, this might be my favorite um, Halloween timeline. I, 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 I can honestly say that. Unfortunately, that's not how it played out. They introduced him last minute in this last film. And you have this weird relationship with Allison and him. And they just become... It's like a fucking Romeo and Juliet story. They fall madly in love in a matter of like weeks, I guess? Days? I'm not sure. Either way, a lot of things left... <sighs> I w a lot of things were left to be desired for me with this entry. I don't hate it. I do like it a lot. Uh, there were some really cool concepts, um, but it definitely is coming in at 12 for me. Coming in at number 11 for me is Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, the producer's cut specifically. If we're talking about the theatrical cut, um, that would be probably lower in, the, in this list. I don't really count it. That would probably switch places with ends maybe. I prefer the, the unrated producer's cut so that's the one I'm talking about. This is where I place it in my ranking. Not much to say about this movie. It is the ending of the Thorn trilogy which I am a fan of. They fucking they went for it. They 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 decided to find you know an origin for Michael and a lot of people don't like that uh, but they, they, they found a purpose and they rolled with it and they saw it through. The way it ends that Thorn trilogy um is kind of exactly what I want. It's kind of ambiguous. And I love that it, it ended there. I love that there's no continuation to that. Um, I'm a big fan of Paul Rudd, seeing him in this, even though he's like a, a fucking creeper half the time. Very awkward in this movie. I still love it. Always will, will love seeing Donald Pleasance. This was the last time that he was in this role. And he did an amazing performance. Um, there's a lot to pick out and kind of make fun of with this movie. But for me personally, it holds a special place. I do love this film, but it is lo it is lower down on my ranking. And number 10, Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Like I said, I'm a big fan of the Thorn trilogy. I'm a big fan of the Jamie Lloyd story. I feel like this would have been higher up on my list had they not silenced little Danielle Harris uh, so for such a portion, large portion of this movie. Um, there's some ridiculous things to pick out about this movie, such as where it picks up from the ending of four. There's some ridiculousness there with where Michael ends up and how, you know, where he is for a year, you know, it's, yeah, it's clunky and it's cheesy and it makes no sense. Uh, I still thoroughly enjoy this movie and I, it's always worth a rewatch for me every year. Absolutely. Coming in at number nine is Halloween Kills. 
So this is where maybe it gets a little controversial. I'm not sure, but for me, Halloween Kills is, is pretty, pretty mid-tier in there. Um, I, I do love it. I think it's great. I think it was an excellent follow-up to Halloween 2018. I love that it was a full force gore fest. I think that was a, a great move. And where some people uh, find faults with uh, sort of the hysteria of the town and that whole kind of arc we take with the hospital and that other escaped lunatic or whatever, and that whole ending. I, I thoroughly enjoyed those parts of the movies. I thought it was a great allegory for, you know, kind of mass hysteria and how people cause, can cause so much trouble. You know what I mean? When, when they get together, that mob mentality can be very, very dangerous. And I really appreciated the way that they approached that angle in this film. I thought it was awesome. I loved Michael. He was fucking savage. I really enjoyed Allison in this in this one, you know, uh, which I did not in Ends. In Ends, she bugged the shit out of me. But in Halloween Kills, Allison was awesome. Judy Greer, who I'm normally not a fan of, I thought she was cool in this. Jamie Lee was kind of sidelined a little bit, but I still thought her performance was good. Though there was some dialogue issues, I will give it that. There were some dialogue issues, and I never, I didn't really get bugged by the whole evil dies tonight over and over and over again. That didn't bug me. I really enjoyed uh, Tommy Doyle. Tommy Doyle's character in this movie, actually. I was like, kind of bummed that he died. Either way, Halloween Kills was awesome. Number eight is Halloween 2018. I was so excited when this movie got announced. And, you know, it really did live up to my expectations. I loved, I loved having Nick Castle back and then bringing in, bringing in James Jude Courtney, obviously. It was an excellent choice. Great decision. A lot of great decisions were made with this movie. There were a couple of questionable things here, but it would, but honestly, they were all outshined by so many good decisions and really creepy moments and the like Michaelisms that were, you know, really laced really well throughout this movie. I feel like somewhere along the line, they lost their way with this trilogy, but that's, that's not the point I'm trying to make. Uh, Halloween 2018 is a very solid film. Coming in at number seven is H2O. So this movie came out when I was a little kid, right? I saw it very young. I was a little confused when I saw it because I didn't realize that it sort of retconned Halloween, you know, four through six. And so it was a little confusing wondering why Laurie Strode had a son and there was no mentioning of Jamie. But, you know, when you take it really as just a sequel to Halloween 2, it's awesome. So I have a soft spot for H2O. I was also already a giant Scream fan by the time this movie came out, so probably the fact that the score was just laced with Marco Beltrami's Scream score kind of left an imprint, but rewatching it, you know, in, in my older years, it's kind of annoying. Uh, that's something that I think kind of deters from this film is the fact that they literally, I mean, it sounds like a Scream film and it just doesn't sound right. Like when they use John Carpenter's score and they, you know, they kind of amp it up a little bit with the orchestral, you know, instruments in the background and stuff. And it sounds great. But when, when it's just kind of Marco Beltrami doing his thing and it's just Scream, it, it misses the mark for me. And it it's so, it's very distracting for me. I think that this ending would have been Fucking awesome. I feel like this is the perfect ending for Laurie Strode and Michael Myers. I felt like it delivered. Unfortunately, they fuck it up with Resurrection. But if you just pretend Resurrection doesn't exist, oh my god, this is the best ending for Laurie and Michael, in my in my opinion. It's great. Uh, kind of emotional. And there's that fucking badass moment in the middle of the movie, you know, during the climax, when fucking Laurie's had enough, she's walking out into the campus and she's got that fucking axe and the music is playing and she's screaming out Michael's name. Dude, that shit gives me goosebumps every time. It's an epic moment. It's an epic movie. Yeah, the mask looks like total fucking dog shit a lot of the time. It's inconsistent. The hair, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking with that. Like, why? Um, but all in all, I enjoyed it. I love jo Josh Hartnett and then LL Cool J is hilarious. I enjoy this film for sure. Coming in at number six is Halloween 2. So Halloween 2 for me is kind of like the perfect sequel to 1978's Halloween it, it's great. You know, it does introduce some things. It, it's it's where we find out that Michael and Lori were brother and sister, you know, in, in this timeline. You know, we find out that Michael and Lori are related. Holy shit. So that's why he's coming after her. Sometimes I wonder if maybe it would have been better if that was never a thing. But because I'm so used to it, I just, I love that idea that they're related. Some people don't. For me, I actually prefer the idea that they are brother and sister. I prefer that storyline. But there's some interesting things with this movie. You know, the whole, like, why 
Michael is writing Samhain or Samhain, uh, but Samhain on the wall in blood, that whole concept, I sort of was kind of interesting, which I guess makes sense as it leads into the Thorn trilogy, but by itself taking, you know, Halloween 1978 and Halloween 2 and leading that, say, into H2O, there's kind of some weird stuff there, but regardless, Halloween 2 was great. It was gorier. It had the same vibe as Halloween 1978. All in all, it was an awesome film. It's one of my favorites. Coming in at number five for me is Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. This film has been through so much shit. When it first came out, everybody fucking hated it. My stepdad told me when I was really little, you know, and I discovered Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, he told me him and his buddies went to the theater fucking psyched to see, you know, another Halloween film only to be just completely devastated that there was no Michael. And there was this whole new story with with the Silver Shamrock Company and these these crazy masks and witchcraft and fucking Stonehenge and, and all that shit. Um, it is one of my all time favorite Halloween movies. It is so good, I love it, you know, and I live in the area where it was filmed, so I, I can go, I've gone to the shooting locations, I've seen the factory many, many times in person. It's awesome. So maybe that's why I kind of have a special place for it in my heart because I'm so close to where it was filmed. You know, I can walk right through Santa Mira. It's not really called that, it's called uh, Lolita, but. It was an awesome movie, super original. I fucking love Tom Atkins and his mustache. It was so fun, such a fun movie. The music was awesome. The masks are fucking kick-ass. It's an important part of the Halloween franchise's history, in my opinion, at this point. And it's getting the recognition it deserves nowadays. Sometimes I really think maybe this franchise might have been better off if it did do the anthology idea that was put forth with this film. But maybe there's room for that in the future now that Bloomhouse is done with their trilogy. Maybe we can move into an anthology series, an anthology trilogy. Let's do, let's start, let's do a new season of The Witch, man. Like, I would be up for that. I love this film. I love everything about it. There's no, there's no negatives for Season of the Witch for me. It is a perfect Halloween film to watch. And I don't mean that in the sense of, like, the Halloween franchise. I just mean the Halloween season. I watch it every year. Yeah, Halloween 3. Big Team Halloween 3 for sure. I fucking love this film. I adore this movie. If you still hate it because there's no Michael Myers in it, just just go back and watch it through different eyes. Just if you haven't gotten to that point yet, just try one more time. It is so good. And this is where my opinion begins to mean nothing to people. Coming in at number four for me is 2007's Rob Zombie's Halloween. Uh, I know. I know what a lot of people think, but for me, and, and that's it's totally fine. It is an acquired taste, absolutely. Uh, nobody's wrong for their opinion on this. Um, I just disagree. But again, that comes down to taste. We've had many movies over the years where there was no reason to Michael's insanity, or there was the, the Thorn trilogy, you know, the Cult of Thorn, the whole Curse of Michael Myers thing. This was kind of a more grounded, what was the dude's upbringing like? And I know that's where it loses people. And I know the good like 45 fucking minutes of little Michael running around in his fucking Kiss t-shirt, being dudes to death in the fucking woods with a tree branch, which is a fucking brutal scene. I love that scene. The one thing I don't like is that in the, in the underrated version, there's that, you know what scene I'm talking about, just kind of unnecessary. It's a little graphic, didn't need to go there. Um, but they went there. Um, I grit my teeth at that scene. I'm not a fan of that scene per se, but great movie overall. I love the aesthetic of Michael in you know, in Smith's Grove. I love all the masks on the wall. I like that he uses it as a form to like escape and live in his head. I love Malcolm McDowell's uh, Sam Loomis. I feel like his Dr. Loomis is excellent. You know, it's really hard to capture what Donald Pleasant, what Donald Pleasance did with the role. And he didn't capture what Donald Pleasance did with the role. No, he did his own thing. And I, I really enjoyed the vision that Rob Zombie and Malcolm McDowell kind of, uh, saw to fruition with, with his version of Dr. Loomis. I really enjoyed it. I also am a fan of Scout Taylor Compton's Laurie Strode. I know. Um, <clears throat> and also, I mean, fuck, man. Rob Zombie bringing back Daniel Harris to c come back home to the Halloween franchise. Yeah, not as Jamie Lloyd, but to take up the mantle of Annie Brackett. And she did it so good, dude. And she's... Uh, 
There's a lot of things about this movie that I love. Very few things that I dislike. Very, very few things that I dislike. It is one of my favorite Halloween films overall. Tyler Mayne is one of my favorite Michael Myers actors. He, he His physical presence is terrifying. The dude's a fucking T-Rex, which I know some people aren't into. They like the average sized Michael Myers, but dude's picking up people with one arm and sticking them to the fucking wall. And you know, sometimes I appreciate a fucking massive dude behind such power. Not, it's not everybody's cup of tea, and I understand that. It's an acquired taste. I get the whole white trash redneck angle that Rob Zombie took and takes. Um, it just worked for me. And this is where I get laughed at, because my opinion means nothing. Coming in at number three, for me, is Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, or H2, from 2009. This movie, I love it for all the reasons people fucking hate it. And I get that. Again, acquired taste. I love the angle they took. I, 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 I really enjoy the weirdness of this movie. Again, because we have gotten so much of the same from this franchise, it was nice to see something weird. It was nice to see something that went a whole new way. I like that Laurie became damaged and totally fucked up. I love Scout Taylor Compton in this. Again, Daniel Harris, fucking fantastic in this movie. And dude, Brad Dourif, he really shines in this one. He's great in, 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 in Rob Zombie's Halloween. But Brad Dourif is like another level in this film. Um, I love his performance. I love this movie. The... I like the angle with the, the white horse, the whole inside of Michael's mind, kind of what he sees. I don't like that they recasted young Michael. I know it's because, you know, what's his face just fucking sprouted up and was too big for the role. I get that. I just kind of wish maybe Rob had the actor just wear the fucking clown mask the whole time or when he did flashbacks to Smith's Grove. Perhaps he had one of his paper mache masks on or something. But when, definitely when Michael or Laurie saw him, I wish he just had the clown mask on because that part of the, that is really the only thing that bugs me about this movie, is just that, which I know a lot of people totally disagree with, and again, I, I appreciate that, I understand that, it's definitely an acquired taste. It just so happened to work for me very, very well. I know it's weird to even like it more than Rob Zombie's Halloween 1, but that's just how it worked out for me. I totally love this film. I do wish that perhaps Rob put in the you know, John Carpenter's Halloween theme in this, in this movie, because I, I don't think it even happens once in this film. Um, and that's okay. It's, it's definitely its own thing. It is crazy. I love the ambiguous ending. And I say ambiguous because a lot of people take that ending as Laurie, at least when, when it takes, they sort of take the ending as like Laurie being in a mental institution and sort of having the same sickness as Michael and seeing their mother and the white horse and all that. For me, I feel like she was dying out in the field and what she was seeing, what we were seeing was what was happening in her mind as she was dying. That's how I take it at least. That's why I think the ending is rather ambiguous, but I, I take it as she was dying. People may disagree. Either way, I fucking love this movie. Coming in at number two is Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Like I said, I love the Thorn trilogy and I feel like Halloween 4 is a perfect continuation from Halloween 2. I love this movie. I love the story. I love Daniel Harris. The Jamie Lloyd angle is great. I really like Michael in this movie. The mask can be wonky sometimes, but overall this is a great movie. I absolutely love this movie. Maybe it's because I watched it a lot as a kid and that's totally acceptable, but this is my ranking and I don't give a shit. Donald Pleasance, Daniel Harris. The ending of this movie is fucking nuts and if if they just ended the Thorn storyline, if they or if they just ended this, if they just ended the fucking Michael storyline right there, boom, at the end of Halloween 4, holy fucking shit, what a shock ending that would be. Man. <laughs> and of course, my top spot, my number one, just like every other butthole on the internet, is, is Halloween 1978. John Carpenter's Halloween. You can't really stand up to this film. It is for all intents and purposes, it is exactly what it's set out to be. This is a, a perfect slasher film, it, 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 for me at least. It's so good, the atmosphere of this film, the score by John Carpenter, what the whole team did is just, they captured something special in 1978 and it can't quite be replica replicated. Though Halloween Kills did really sweet with those flashbacks, I gotta say. 
Um, but this film is, is, is number one for a reason in so many people's lists. It can't go unnoticed. It, it earned that spot. It started it all. It really is the fucking daddy of the genre at this point. Um, Michael Myers is a fucking monster in this. He is terrifying, stalking during the day. Of course, Donald Pleasant's performance is fantastic. And Jamie Lee Curtis was was great in this movie. A everything about this movie is just awesome all around. Um, honestly, I, I, I there's nothing I dislike about this movie. Halloween 1978 is amazing. This is one that... I've, I've, I've watched since I was so young. It was the first Halloween movie I ever saw. And it's just, it'll always be that high. Nothing will ever dethrone this movie in general when it comes to slasher flicks. Halloween 1978 is way up there on my fucking list. It is one of my all-time favorite movies. I don't really have much more to say. They fucking killed it. So what do you think? Is my ranking totally dog shit? How does it compare to yours? Anyways, let me know down below what you think. Make fun of me, ridicule me, I don't care. We can talk about it. If you want to see more shit like this, go ahead and stab the like button, slash subscribe, and get that bell notification. I'll see you guys later.